So now we move on to configuring the system. There's some information here about it and the boot scripts. So let's go into the sources and extract the boot scripts. Change into them and it's just this single make install command. And that's done. There's a bit here about device and modules. Um, recommend you read that in case it's appropriate to you. Won't be needing it here. Same with the devices here. Um, deals with things like multiple sound cards or CD drives and so on. So general network configuration. Now, as I said at the very beginning, um, recommended that you um, use a um, wired network interface because um, it's just a lot lot easier. The uh, wireless needs a lot more configuration um, and it's just not really feasible at this point. Um, Linux scratches a basic system and it would just add more to the basic system. It's unnecessary really. So um, what we're going to do now is um, copy this file here first and just going to make some modifications to it using Vi. So it's called ifconfig.0. Now the thing is with um, the newer uh, devices, the way they're named, is they don't tend to use a Z0. Um, it tends to use, or tend, tends to be um, a different um, naming convention that's based on the physical location on the bus, on the, the hardware bus of the uh, system. So um, what I tend to do now is not bother with this ETH0 thing because it doesn't really relate to anything. Um, so to find out what the device name really is, you can do something like IP space A and you'll get a device name here. This is the one I'm using. See, this is the IP address I'm connected to. And this is the actual hardware ID. You can also do something like, um, um, is it IF, yeah, IF config minus A. It's a bit easy to read actually, IF config minus A. And it shows you all the network devices. So you can see there's a ENP. E stands for the Ethernet, and there's a WLP that stands for the wireless. So, um, as you can see, there's no IP address associated with the wireless because it's not configured. Um, I'm using a, an Ethernet connection, so that is the name of the interface that I want to deal with. So, what I'm going to do is change the name of this file to reflect the fact that I'm using the real internet address, uh, sorry, real hardware address of the network card. So ENP2S0. I'm now going to modify that file to make some changes to it. So the name is not ETH0, it was ENP2S0. So I need to change that. And to, if you've never used Vi before or Vim, you can use the keys to go up and down, left and right. And you need to put it into insert mode. You can do that with Control uh, Shift A, which will put the cursor at the end of the line and turn insert mode on. And then you can just normally delete things and edit things as per usual on that on that single line. So I'm just going to paste in that name. 
I'll move down, I'll change the IP address to one that I use locally. So, 0.200, this will obviously be different for your own network. The gateway, I need to change that. And I need to change the broadcast address as well. And it's escape colon X to save an exit. So now I need to create a resolve.conf and we need to change that so we can edit it. Uh, So domain, if you've got a domain, you can put that in there. It looks something like um, yeah, mydomain.org, for example. Let's spell domain correctly. And then the, uh, the IP address of your name server. And generally, you'd get that from your um, ISP. It may even be on your modem. Um, I've just happened to have a local one, so I'll be using that. Um, I'll try backup one as well. I think um, there's a publicly available one that Google uh, published, which is 8.8.8.8. .8 so that would be four eights like that, if you wish to use that. There are other publicly available ones as well. Um, I think there's one that guarantees your security or your anonymity or something or other as I remember. Um, free DNS servers. Um, is it this one here? No, it's not that one. on here might be mentioned on this article oh yeah this is the open DNS I think I think that's um, no that's not the one that's one of them though oh I think it's this Cloudfair one uh, yeah that's the Google ones Komodo Yeah, I think it might have been. Yeah, it's this Cloudfair one. Yeah, that's all right. They they guarantee like your safety uh, on the internet by using them. So I think in this article it says here that they um got good input performance and tight privacy levels. So. I think I've used this one in the past and it's um, pretty fast as well. Yeah, it's got examples here. So if, if you were looking for one, that would be the one to use. Uh, I think, well, I'd, what, what's only the one I'd recommend, 1.1.1.1, easy to remember as well. Fast free and private. So, but obviously, um, there's plenty there, as, as you can see in this article. It's up to you to choose which one you want to use. Okay, so that's the um, resolve file. So now we need to configure the host name. So we could call the host something like um, something like this, maybe uh, not in capitals though. Something like that, for example. Just give the computer a name, uh, and then we need to create a host file. And again, we can edit that. And whatever name you use here is the name that you'll need to put into here. 
So I'm going to delete these three lines. There's two D's. Just delete them. And we need to put in the fully qualified domain name here. Um, we don't actually need this line. For this one we do. This has got to be the IP address that we've selected previously in the network interface file. So that's zero, um, and I selected 200 before. Then a fully qualified domain name. Well, that's that, followed by the domain which I use, which was my domain.org. That's the FQDN part. The host name is just the host name we created earlier and then you can create any number of aliases after that so I could, could call it um, for example my PC as well if I wanted to so I could refer to this computer I still haven't spelt my domain right have I domain uh, I could refer to this computer either by the IP address or by its fully qualified domain name or its simple host name or this alias so now we need to create a boot up script no changes need to be made to that Oh, okay, I didn't copy the EOF, you can see it's not highlighted, but I can type that in and that should complete the file. And just to be doubly sure that it has been created correctly, I'll edit it and view it. Yeah, that's okay, so it's got the end comment and everything else is there and looks okay. So that's a dig copy, okay, I'll just use quit to quit that, didn't make any changes. Uh, some more stuff there about configuring. There's something here about configuring the clock. So we'll just copy that in and then we can edit it by hand. And what it says here that um, this needs to be set to 1 if the um, computer's clock, the hardware clock, is set to um, Uh, is set to UTC. Now if this was Linux on its own on this machine you'd leave that as a 1. But because um, this machine is being shared or will be shared with Windows machine which I believe stores the local time as it says here you need to change it to a value of 0 if the hardware clock is not set to UTC time. So because this machine is sharing with Windows, we need to set that to zero. And then there's a parameter there for any other options that you might need to add to configure the clock. So I can save that. And then we need to create this console file as well to configure the console. And there's a few changes we need to make here. This um, example that we're is for Polish setup. Um, there's one here for Euro with a German key map. So I need to make some changes myself. Um, obviously for an English layout. So uh, I need to make some changes to the key map which for United Kingdom is UK and I use the lat2-16 not 2a so latin2-16 minus m 8859 and 1 the dash 2 I think is for the Eastern European countries and uh, sorry that yeah dash 1 is for Western European countries and dash 2 is for Eastern European um, and I think the dash one is for US as well. I think that works with US. 
there's another option to add here to stop kernel messages appearing. Uh, I generally forget about it, but this time I haven't. It's this option here, log level. Paste that in and set it three is a good default to set it to. Put that in quotes. If you don't put that in, you get a load of kernel messages appearing and it could be quite disconcerting. So that's that setting. Some more information there. This RC site file, they've listed it here. You don't need to make any changes to it. We've just displayed, uh, shown it here. And some more information about how the startup works and so on. Best startup shell files. Okay, so we need to find the locale we're in or the available locales. You can see there's loads because we added them all in for the tests. And it says here that we need to run this command to find out what the um, actual um, character map would be. So, ENGB ISO 88591, if I put that in, it's what the example is anyway, but we can run it to see, see the output's the same. So whatever country you're in, for example, if you're in Mexico, you stick that into this locale name and whatever the output was you got there. And that's what we're going to use in a minute. And you can find other things here by running these commands. So if you want to know the language, type in language and it tells you British English. So we can copy this here. The language is this output here. Um, let me just check that. Um, yeah, I can never remember if it's the, I presume it's the uppercase that we just got. Um, if it isn't, we can change it. So it is a full stop as it's got there. We've got the ENGB full stop in the char map, which is the uppercase value we got here. And then we can carry on, paste the rest of this in. If it turns out to be wrong, it's easy enough to modify to the lower case. So let's just, yeah, the space there, just put that in to make it tidy. So I'll just put that up. So export lang equal, en is the ll part capital GB is the CC part and then the char map is this bit we derived and there's no modifiers but there, there may be for some languages and there's a link there for uh, further information so now we've got an input RC file to create configuration file there's nothing to change here just copy it straight in and move on Again, there's a shell files here, shells file to tell the system or to allow programs to find out what shells are installed. So the only shell we've got is bash and we've got sh which is a link, which is a link to bash. But in the BLFS book, there are other shells that can be installed, for example, the sheet C shell and I think ZF, ZSH is one as well, which would have to be added to that file.